Hello everyone, my name is Shin, and I bet most of you are wondering, wait, this guy has a voice? And uh, yeah, surprisingly it turns out I do. <laughs> Not a great one or anything, but when I need one, I can in fact talk. And uh, especially if you're a newer player watching this, the next thing you're probably wondering is, uh, you know, what to ask. This, I have this level 1 sword and what? What do I do? <laughs> and that's what this video is for. I want this to be part of a series where I go weapon type by weapon type, uh, just giving my advice on the best enchants that you could use for whatever you want to do for the specific weapon itself, because uh, with the exception of some groups, uh, weapons have pretty diverse niche uh, things that they can do, which might require different enchantments, and I want to try to give you uh, an idea of what enchantments that you would want to run to get the best out of what you want for that weapon. And I figured since these are historical icons, they're a staple, they've been around for a long time, and they're just really good weapons, and also because they're the most basic and uh, simple weapon, that I would start with the sword. Uh, now, in terms of DPS, that being damage per second. Sword is a little bit above average. It's fairly middling, though. It has, you know, medium speed, medium damage. Its reach is, uh... No. See, that's that's going through the uh, dummy, and it's not reaching, so it's... Its reach isn't the worst. It's just not as good as it looks like it should be. However, if you have some uh, range issues, and your weapons have one hit in the combo that's a bit longer than the others, that being like the sword's final hit here, you can actually trick the game into thinking it has more reach than it actually does. So right around there. See, I'm hitting from... Can't, it doesn't even look like I should be able to hit, so you can use this trick very easily to uh, fix the range issue, uh, which is really nice for a lot of weapons, especially a sword. Now, as far as enchants go, uh, I want to say, uh, and this isn't really to brag or anything, um, but the way that I play this game, I hardly ever see the you died message, and for that matter, I rarely even really have to potion, and that's because I focus on defense and healing. Uh, that coming from my armor, the defense, as well as iron hide amulet cut and the damage I take in half, and also on my weapons. No matter what I'm running, even if my armor has lifesteal on it, I will go for either leeching or radiance on my weapon, or if it's a soul weapon, I'll go anima conduit, uh, for my healing. Now, to determine whether or not you want to use radiance, uh, I have two um, rules of thumb. That being, the better your weapon's damage per second, that being how fast it kills things, the better leeching is, and the lower that is, the worse it is. And for Radiance, the faster a weapon is, the better, and the slower, the worse. Uh, at 251 power, Radiance heals 230,000 damage and change every time it triggers, which is 1 in 5 hits. So that means every 5 hits, you're healing around 230,000. Leeching takes 9% of an enemy's maximum health and gives it to you. So, you could kind of measure this out. Um, the damage you do is essentially the health you're taking from an enemy, so uh, you could take 5 hits of damage and uh, take 9% of that to see how it compares to leeching, uh, but you also have to take damage buffs into account for your weapon as well, and when you consider all of that, for a sword, leeching is just better than radiance. Radiance alone is not reliable on a sword for uh, healing. And this is also considering, from experience, that Armored Vindicators, Royal Guards, Ravagers, other beefy enemies like that, and anything that's enchanted is anywhere from 60% to a full HP refill when you kill them. So if you have decent damage reduction, along with uh, some nice uh, damage enchants on your weapon, and the assistance of Gong, it's very easy to kill those types of enemies before they kill you and get all your health back. So, that would be the number one priority that, that you want for your uh, weapon. Now, after that, the next thing that comes to mind is damage, and there's a few options when it comes to damage. 
for instance, and I'm going to name some that aren't that good, you have Rampaging here. Rampaging has a 10% chance to increase your attack speed by 50%. However, what it doesn't tell you is that this is additive. So, if you have a Death Cap Mushroom active, which you should have if you're running melee because this doubles your attack speed, killing things twice as fast, that gives you 100% more attack speed. So you have 200% attack speed total with this. Rampaging is going to increase that to 250%. So overall, that's only 25% more speed or 25% more DPS. Which, um, it's not the worst, but when you factor in that it only has a 10% chance to activate, that's not really all that great. Meanwhile, Sharpness, this one's not the best damage enchant. I'm going to be going up the line. Uh, sort of, there's one that's not as good, but Sharpness compared to Rampaging, for instance, it's 33% more damage. And that's like a complete, just a one third of your weapon's overall damage is being added on to this, uh, to the weapon's damage. And it's really nice because they stack with each other to multiply each other. So if you have two sharpness on your weapon, that's not 66% more damage. That's actually 70, almost 77% because it's also multiplying the damage of that first sharpness as well. The one downside is that sharpness does not stack fully um, with most other buffs. For instance, if you uh, have... Pretend this is uh, Renegade Armor because <coughs> Hungry Horror is not supposed to be uh, gilded. Same thing anyway, it doesn't matter. Um... It's 20% more weapon damage. If you have sharpness with that, they will combine for 53% more damage, or if it's with two sharpness, it'll be about 97% more damage. So they're not um, multiplying each other, and the same goes for uh, Coward Ice and stuff like that. So it's not the most efficient. They don't. The game doesn't tell you that they don't uh, multiply. Still though, it's a very solid um, damage enchant. Another one that you could run for damage is uh, pain cycle right here. What it does is for the first five hits of your weapon, you will take 3% of your max health as damage, and it builds up a pain stack, uh, what they would call it, I guess. On the sixth hit, the next attack, it says it does five times damage, but it's not quite exactly what happens. But yeah, you're basically getting, uh, on that sixth hit, you're doing an extra four hits, so that's ten hits worth of damage in six attacks. So, it's like a 66.6% um, DPS increase at best. There are some uh, drawbacks to this though. Uh, just like Sharpness, it's additive. What it does, instead of multiplying the total damage by 5, it's actually adding 400% of the weapon's base damage onto that hit. So for instance, if you're using your totally legitimate Hungry Horror here with 20% more damage, and your weapon's doing, say, 100 damage a hit. So you're doing 120 damage a hit. On that sixth hit, you would think, oh, if it's multiplying by five, then I'm doing 600 in that hit, right? No. Oh, what it's doing is it's going to multiply the damage of that sixth hit, uh, or rather it's going to add 420% onto it, the 20% from the armor and the 400% uh, from uh, pain cycle, so it's actually going to be doing 520%. Again, not the biggest difference, but it still isn't as good as it could be, and you know, you're hurting yourself for it. On the other hand, though, you can run Sharpness with Coward Ice uh, for 73% more damage just with those two combined. Uh, you can't do that with Pain Cycle because Coward Ice requires you to have full health for this, and Pain Cycle hurts you. And yeah, you're not going to always have maximum health. Um, when you're attacking enemies, but if you have decent healing, especially if you have like life steal too, which you can run that if you want to, but just leeching is enough to generally have max health for a significant portion of uh, combat if you have decent other enchants on your stuff. So it's even if you take into account not having full health all the time, that's like maybe 70%. Even if it's the same, you know, 66.6% .6 more damage, that's still, you're not hurting yourself for it. So, I would say that's definitely more worth it. Uh, even though it's perfectly fine if you want to run uh, Pain Cycle. Now there is Smiting as well, but that's only 40% more damage and it's to one type of enemy. If you take all those enemies into account over, like, the entire game and how much percentage of them there are compared to the other enemies. It doesn't come out to the full 40%. It's more like... Uh, I had numbers for it before, but since they've added more 
enemies that are undead and not undead. It's skewed it a little bit, but it could be more like 17, maybe 20% more extra damage if you factor in the entire game. Illager's Bane is the same as Smiting, except it's for Illagers, which is more useful because now with raid parties, there's, you know, big Illager groups, especially uh, the raid captains and annoying Geomancers, so there's a bit um, of use for that. However, overall, I would say that your two best damage and chance would be one critical hit. The way that this works is every... You have a 20% chance to land a critical hit, which does three times damage. So that's an extra two hits of damage, and that, on average, um, triggers every five attacks. So basically every five attacks, you're doing two more attacks worth of damage. And two is 40% of five, so it's increasing your overall DPS by 40%. It does not matter the weapon. If it's slower, you're not critting as often, but those crits are worth more damage because slower weapons are usually stronger. So this is very solid. Um, still though, Sharpness, you might like that over Critical Hit because the way Critical Hit works is it's either no extra damage or triple, which for a lot of enemies could be overkill. Meanwhile, Sharpness could be the difference between killing an enemy in two hits and killing them in one, so you could save yourself from getting hit. Or, you know, turning three hits into two hits, meanwhile Crit has to activate for it. But since a lot of enemies are usually pretty beefy, and they take more than just a few hits to kill, Critical Hit will kill things quicker than Sharpness, especially considering that Critical Hit is a complete multiplier. Like, your total damage, when, like at least your total um, weapons damage, whatever that is, Crit will triple it when it triggers, so that is a complete 40% increase. It's one of the only three multipliers actually in the game. The second one is Committed. The way that it works is, whatever percentage of health that an enemy is missing, that much percentage extra is added on to your next attack. So, say they have 100 health and you're doing 10 damage per hit, that first hit will do 10 damage, and then with Committed, the next hit will do 10% more, because they're missing 10% of their health, which means it'll do 11, so they're missing 21% next hit. So you do 21% more and so on, and it just builds up as you're hitting the enemy. Um, even if it's a prolonged fight, it doesn't really wind up being better than uh, an enemy that takes like two or three hits because those percentages will jump bigger for those enemies that die in two or three hits. Um, I've run starting percentages ranging from 1%, 5%, 10%, 20%, 25%, 25%, etc. And on average, taking all the damage of all those hits together and averaging them out, it's come out to about 43 to maybe 46% more damage. Sometimes can be more, sometimes a little less, but overall it's more than uh, critical hit or sharpness. However, when comparing it to sharpness by themselves, like just sharpness and crit, if, or um, committed if there's no other uh, buffs, then uh, it doesn't actually kill, like committed doesn't actually kill the enemy in less hits than sharpness will. In fact, for sharpness to two-hit kill an enemy, um, they would need to take originally 37%-ish, and then sharpness will boost that up to 50% on the first hit and then kill on the second. Meanwhile, committed would need about 46% damage on the first hit for the second to kill. But since unlike sharpness, committed is a complete multiplier, meaning it will multiply your built-in armor damage buffs, it'll multiply coward ice, it'll multiply... Uh, like strength potion and stuff like that, then um, th that just makes it better overall. But if you want to run sharpness, or if that's the only option that you have, then that's fine as well. Um, there are some other uh, damage options like uh, shockwave and swirling. Uh, however, those the way those work, um, the more damage that your weapon's combo has in total, the less effective it is. So. Swirling and Shockwave, no matter the weapon, have the same damage at 251 power. So Swirling's 613,000, and uh, Shockwave would be 460,000. Even without any enchantments on the weapon itself, if you just have, say, uh, Renegade Armor or Hunter or with Coward Ice, right there, that's about 2.1, 2.2 million damage. So Swirling is only going to be adding about... Uh, less than a third to that combo, so it's even worse than uh, sharpness. On top of that, if you're running leeching on your weapon, which I would strongly recommend, if anything but the weapon's damage kills the enemy, you will not get leeching. And even if you're running 
uh, life steal, so you get healing per hit. It doesn't heal you for things like thundering and shockwave and swirling damage, so I don't recommend that even if you don't care so much about the damage that it adds. And on top of that, um, talking about thundering, since I just reminded myself, the way that this works is uh, if you want to find out about how much damage it would add since it has a 30% chance to trigger every hit, you would want to take 30% uh, of that total, 287,000 uh, damage. So you take 287,565, find out what 30% of that is, um, so that will be about how much it adds per hit. So it's doing about 86,269 damage uh, per hit, like adding up when it does trigger. For the full combo, that would be about 258, 259,000 damage. It's worse than Shockwave, so again, I wouldn't recommend that. Then there's um, uh, Fire Aspect and Poison Cloud, which I would not recommend for any weapon, just at all, unless you want to do it for fun, because it's both of their damage per second is limited to being uh, 345,000. You could hit 603,000-ish with... Uh, Poison Focus and Fire Focus, but that's still worse than what you could get just from Coward Ice and Physical Damage and Chance that all multiply each other. And also, again, those can block Leeching and they don't go towards Lifesteal, so I wouldn't recommend those either. And then there's Echo. Um, don't ever use Echo. <laughs> Even on a slow weapon like a Claymore, uh, using my Mushroom at its full length of time, which is 21.3 seconds, I got 46 hits on the dummy without Echo, and 48 with it. And that's over over a third of a minute's length of time, only adding two hits, because Echo, it, it doesn't even give you free hits, it just makes a slightly faster hit. So it doesn't even, um, it doesn't even give you free extra damage for when it does trigger. The faster the weapon is, too, the less you're getting for it, because Echo just triggers every three seconds. So, say for instance, if you're hitting six times with your sword in one second, you could land 18 hits before Echo even triggers. So it's adding one hit out of 18, um, and that's just not worth it. So, the only time I would ever recommend it is maybe on a slow weapon if you want to do strategic double strikes, but mainly you would want it for weapons with knockback, because that extra knockback, especially on maybe a spear with gravity, would be really nice to keep enemies from being able to hit you. Or if you're using a slow soul weapon, like a soul knife, uh, with soul siphon, and you want extra hits so you can try to get soul siphon to trigger more. That's the only time that I would recommend that. And uh, you might notice also, I there's a distinct lack of me mentioning uh, Reckless while I was talking about Coward Ice. That's because, um, to uh, summarize things shortly, even at its best, Reckless bad. <laughs> Okay, so if you look at it at its best, it's adding 80% more damage for a 60% cut in HP. So it's multiplying how fast you kill things by 1.8 times, and it's multiplying how fast mobs kill you by 2.5 times. So that's already a net negative, which is not a good thing for an enchant. But just like sharpness and pain cycle and strength potion and all that, it only adds a modifier. It doesn't even multiply your total damage. So if you have just a strength potion active, um and you use Reckless, for instance, it's only increasing your damage by 40% because it's adding on and giving you 180% more damage. Uh, if you compare it to the same armor with Coward Ice instead, Reckless is only doing 16% more than Coward Ice would, and you're taking over half of your health for it. And I've used it on Obsidian Pinnacle in an earlier video, and I did it without dying. And it took me really long because I had to do hit-and-run tactics because I was so squishy. Even Armored Vindicators could... Uh, if there was a group of three of them, they could all kill me in their three hits, even if I was using Fighter's Bindings with the Machine Gun Radiance healing, unless I used a Gong, because it just wasn't adding that much extra damage. It's fine if you want an extra challenge, or just to make things harder for yourself, but uh, by definition, it's it's not good. It, it gives you an, it, it's a complete negative. If you run any uh, countermeasures to try to mitigate the damage that you're taking, you're just going to hurt your damage more than Reckless helps it. Um, but speaking in the opposite direction of that, uh, where you die really fast, if you want um, other options for your weapon that aren't just damage, another great enchantment, and I think, personally, I would say this is not only the best enchantment that's come 
from the Hidden Depths DLC, but it is, I would say, tied with Leeching and Radiance as the best weapon enchant, and that is Guarding Strike. How Guarding Strike works is whenever you kill an enemy, you get a 50% damage uh, decrease for 4 seconds, which is huge, because it is really easy to kill an enemy every 4 seconds, even every 2 seconds, and cutting this damage in half that you're taking while stacked with Ironhide Amulet does mean that you're taking 1 fourth of the damage, and if your armor has 35% damage reduction too, that is 80% damage reduced, because 35% damage reduction works kind of weird. It's, just, it's almost as good as Potion Barrier, like, you will never need to potion if you have something like this active. Especially, e even if there's like a really big, beefy, strong mob, if you just kill a little weak one, uh, you get that damage reduction boost right there, so you don't even have to worry about having to kill the big tough one. Um, you can like save some little ones and keep your uh, damage reduction up really high. You can get through areas, like I said, without having to potion at all, just with leeching, guarding strike, and committed for damage if you don't have it gilded, and then add critical hit if uh, you do want it gilded. Or, and this is another alternative, you have Weakening. Uh, it has some pros over um, Guarding Strike, but overall it has more cons. The one pro is that you don't need to kill the enemy to get this buff, you just have to hit them and it drops their damage like 40%, which is almost the same as 50%, 40-50. The thing is though that it doesn't combine well with actual damage reduction. It often will come out to maybe 25-30% reduction instead, so already right there it's not as much as it should be. Uh, but also, if the enemy has Burning, Electrified, Fire Trail, or Thorns, Weakening will not drop that down at all. Uh, but the one upside to it is that if you're playing in multiplayer, Guarding Strike will not increase your partner's damage reduction, but Weakening will reduce the damage that enemies do to them. So if you want to have them in mind, you could run Weakening instead. Or you could uh, be like me with this behemoth of a weapon here and run both because of well, I could get to Anchor later, but basically if you're hitting enemies and then killing them as well with Guarding Strike and Weakening, you're taking almost no damage. It is ridiculous how little damage that you take with that. It's something like 86% damage reduction, so even for a sword, um, just with Committed alone and then Leeching, Guarding Strike, and Weakening, uh, you're basically immortal. You, you will have a hard time dying. It is still fairly easy to kill uh, enemies with just Committed on your weapon. Um, though, you can also run Refreshment on your weapon instead if you want to, uh, like I have on this Hawk brand. This is mainly good though if you have Potion Barrier on your armor because it reduces the damage you take by 90%. And Potion Barrier lasts for 9 seconds while your potion takes 45 seconds to recharge, so that gives you 36 seconds of no Potion Barrier per each time you use it. Um, and since Refreshment reduces your potion cooldown by 3 seconds every enemy you kill, you only have to kill 12 enemies to um, refill that in the time that you're vulnerable. And it's pretty easy to do that within the 9 seconds that you have Potion Barrier. And even if you don't, it's only a few seconds before you can use it again. Which is really solid, but I would still rank Guarding Strike a little bit higher because you won't need to potion at all if you have that. Only under really extreme circumstances would you need to. Um, that being, like, if there's a really tough enemy, they could easily one or two shot you, which is very rare, and you don't have anything to get Guarding Strike off of. Otherwise, very solid. Um, and especially for uh, a Diamond Sword or a Hawk Brand, you might want to run those, because Hawk Brand and Sinister Swords uh, reskin has critical hit built in, so you can't get crit on it normally, uh, unless you hack, but this is not what I'm promoting here, despite uh, the Hungry Horror that I have. Um, so... For damage, you would only be able to run Double Sharpness, Committed, and then Leeching if you want to. Uh, which isn't bad, but I would recommend instead either to do Committed, uh, Guarding Strike, and Weakening with Leeching, or Committed, Sharpness, and Guarding Strike, or Refreshment with that. And the same goes for Diamond Sword, especially because its built-in enchantment is Sharpness, which means you can't stack any of them, so it's stuck with just Critical Hit, Committed, and Leeching, and then something else. Um, this one I have Radiance on it because that was my best option, but the weapon is fast enough where if you already have Leeching on it, Radiance can provide really nice healing. Um, say for if it's a really beefy mob and you're not killing it really fast, Radiance can give you intermediate healing before it dies, and then Leeching can top you off, just so that they don't leave you missing health after like that last hit if they manage to hit you right before that and Radiance doesn't trigger. And especially if that mob has Thorns on it too. Uh, but if I could, I would have gone for Guarding Strike instead. Uh, 
because it's just better. Um, but for another alternative uh, to like that extra slot for your weapon, if you just want critical hit or sharpness with committed or sharpness and leeching, you could do gravity. Um, it's mainly good for anything that's... I I'm not really a fan of it on daggers or uh, weapons that swing all around. What gravity does really well is funneling enemies into your hits, because if you're playing on Apocalypse Plus 25, uh, mobs are really fast, really tanky, you're not going to be able to keep them from swarming on you, and while you're attacking enemies in front of you, you really don't want them like freely hitting your backside or your sides. So gravity, if you have that on, it'll pull those enemies into your weapon as well, so you're hitting more at a time and killing them faster. It's especially nice for creepers, because uh, creepers often like to watch you, you know, killing enemies in front of you and be like, hey, 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 I'm gonna blow up just outside of your weapon reach so I can still hurt you and you can't kill me. Gravity pulls them right in, kills them before they can explode. Easy peasy. So, if I were to summarize, um, for a sword, diamond sword, hawk brand, whatever, you want leeching on the weapon, first and foremost. After that, I would say two enchantments for damage. So for a sword, it would be crit and committed. For a diamond sword, it would be the same thing too. Hawk brand, it would be sharpness and committed. And then after that, if it's gilded, do guarding strike. Or if it's not gilded, guarding strike and committed. Just for maximum damage and defense. You can also do, uh, like I said, gravity instead. If you want to do uh, gravity, leeching, sharpness slash crit and committed. Or you could do weakening instead, or you could do guarding strike and weakening with committed and leeching. Just all very solid options. And um, throughout this, I do have some uh, footage that I'll be able to play uh, showing some examples of this. Um, but with this, even with just a basic sword, it will be really hard for you to die. Like, just this sword here, when I had it enchanted, I don't have enough points because I have so many items, with, um, leeching, committed, sharpness, and crit on plus 25 ancient hunts, it was pretty comfortable. It would take something really extreme to destroy me. <laughs> so, again, very, very nice. As long as you have a fairly competent build, um... Like, for instance, Imploding Crossbow, very nice. It d ignores Deflect, ignores Thorns, groups enemies together. Which is another great thing for gravity, by the way. Um, Gong of Weakening, like I said, reduces damage you take by 25% and increases the damage you deal to enemies by three times, and that is a complete multiplier. Um, it's a multiplier for everything, too, even Shockwave, Swirling Damage, etc. So it's just the best for damage. Um, it's better if you have the enemies grouped together, though, when you use it, so you can hit them with your gravity weapon, and then gong, keeping them together, and just obliterate them. Then you've got mushroom to keep your attack speed doubled, and ironhide amulets to cut the damage that you take in half, especially if you're melee. And if you're high enough power and you have cooldown on your armor, you can cycle these two infinitely, while this only takes about 12 seconds to recharge. Uh, and in general, for melee, for your armor, you would want cooldown for that reason. And then after that, you would want Potion Barrier for if you're in a pinch and you need that barrier to keep yourself alive. Very nice. Uh, and after that, then, if it's... Uh, whether it's Guild or not, you can run one or two of cooldown for, like, extra gong cooldown. That way it'll like, take seven, eight seconds to recharge. Or you could do uh, Chilling to slow enemies down, lower their damage per second on you. It's very nice, slows everything down around you. Or you could use Snowball to stun lock up to one or two enemies. At a time, They're not as needed as, uh, I would say, chilling, because melee can handle stuff on its own, but it's still very useful. And there's Coward Ice for more damage, or you can do Deflect, because you know, 50 about a 50% chance uh, to deflect all ranged attacks, so that while you're attacking melee enemies, you're not just getting shot at for free. That's nice, too. Anyway, hopefully this little bit here helps you with swords. Um, so they're a pretty fun weapon. They're very basic, though, kind of average and overlooked, but I like them. The ones that I have, very fun to use, very reliable, even this, because I will use my potion barrier build for it. Sometimes I have to trigger it on purpose, just to feel like I'm doing something, getting refreshment to trigger. But, it is very fun. Um, again, stay away from Reckless. I've been Shin... I almost said Shin Kanoyami. <laughs> I've been Shin for the win, and until next time, which may be axes, see ya.